And so this is a chart that is going to show you the leucine content of things that we commonly eat. And the most important factor to note is that the plant foods all have enough leucine, this essential amino acid, to keep us healthy, but not so much that they turn on those mTOR genes that promote cancer development. And I want to make uh, um, also point out that eggs and dairy uh, have very high levels of uh, leucine, but that's because number one, eggs are really designed to create new baby birds and therefore need to have all of the essential amino acids inside the egg for that um, um, bird to grow from an embry embryo to a chick. Um, and arguably nature never intended that eggs should be consumed as food. Likewise, dairy um, products are derived from animal milks, which again, are designed to promote the development and growth of baby mammals and therefore have a higher leucine content because you want those baby mammals to grow. But again, nature never intended that people should be consuming dairy products or any mammal or other animals should be consuming dairy products or um, things, products derived from milk once that animal has reached adulthood. And with respect to uh, meats or animal tissue, well, Clearly our bodies have um, uh, concentrated uh, leucine in our tissues um, so that our cells can do what they are designed to do. But again, I would argue that um, these animal tissues are clearly not meant to be consumed by uh, plant-based animals. So again, mTOR genes are upregulating human cancers. Leucine has the greatest effect on increasing this mTOR expression and activity. Animal protein increases both uh, TOR expression, but also IGF-1 levels because it stimulates the liver to pump out higher levels of this growth hormone, IGF-1. Animal proteins also have a much higher content of a uh, sulfur-containing amino acid named methionine, which in and of itself promotes cancer development in excess amounts. And it also causes uh, cellular aging through mitochondrial oxidation and sclerosis. Animal protein accelerates kidney damage, um, increases cardiovascular risk, diabetes, risk for peripheral vascular disease, overall inflammation, and also increases bone loss that can lead to osteoporosis. So this is a lecture from Dr. Uh, Michael Gregor's nutritionfact.org. Uh, okay. Thank you. Over the last decade, more than 5,000 papers have been published about TOR, an enzyme inhibited by the drug rapamycin, a drug used experimentally to extend lifespan, but already in use clinically to prevent the rejection of kidney transplants. Patients who received rapamycin due to kidney transplantation had a peculiar side effect, a decrease in cancer incidence. In a set of 15 patients who had biopsy-proven Kaposi sarcoma, a cancer that often affects the skin. Within three months after starting rapamycin therapy, all cutaneous Kaposi sarcoma lesions had disappeared in all patients. This makes sense given that TOR functions as a master regulator of cellular growth and proliferation. For example, TOR is upregulated in nearly 100% of advanced human prostate cancers. Maybe that's why dairy consumption has been found to be a major dietary risk factor. We used to think it was just all the hormones in milk, but maybe prostate cancer initiation progression is also promoted by cow's milk stimulation of TOR. Our understanding of mammalian milk has changed from a quote-unquote simple food to a species-specific endocrine signaling system, which activates TOR promotes cell growth and proliferation and suppresses our body's internal house cleaning mechanisms. Now normally, milk-mediated TOR stimulation is restricted only to infancy, where we really need that constant signal to our cells to grow and divide. From an evolutionary perspective, it can be concluded that the persistent abuse of the growth-promoting signaling system of bovine milk by drinking milk over our entire lifespan maintains the most important hallmark of cancer biology, sustained proliferative signaling. Grow, grow, grow. TOR appears to play a role in breast cancer, too. 
higher TOR expression has been noted in breast cancer tumors and associated with more aggressive disease, and lower survival rate among breast cancer patients. This could explain why women hospitalized for anorexia may end up with only half the risk of breast cancer. Severe caloric restriction in humans may confer protection against invasive breast cancer by suppressing TOR activation. But we don't have to starve ourselves to suppress TOR. Just reducing animal protein intake can attenuate overall TOR activity. Moreover, plants emphasizing plants, especially cruciferous vegetables, not only decrease TOR activation, they also provide natural plant-derived inhibitors of TOR in broccoli and green tea and soy and turmeric and grapes, along with other fruits and vegetables such as onions, strawberries, blueberries, mangoes, and the skin of cucumbers. Maybe that's why plant-based diets are associated with lower risk for many cancers, the downregulation of TOR. So are we finally on the threshold of being able to fundamentally alter human aging and age-related disease? Only time will tell, but if the pace and direction of recent progress are any indication, the next 5,000 studies on TOR should prove very interesting indeed.